Hello my lovelies, I'm Ginny O, the author with no last name, and today I want to talk about Star Stable 2023, The Year in Review. And before we start, I'd also like to welcome a new viewer, or maybe an old viewer, um, Jane Skullman, the executive producer at Star Stable. Uh, Hi Jane! Welcome to the channel, or you know, thank you for listening if this is not your first video, or a member of Jane's team. So hi Jane team member, uh, thank you for coming if you're here. Alright, so we will be discussing Jane Skullman and her team's listening to Star Stable content and their content creators and my extreme dislike of that term in another video. But today we are talking about 2023, a year in review, and um, I like to call, oh no, the consequences of our actions. Okay. So Star Stable has changed a lot this year, or at least a lot for Star Stable. Now, the kind of scale I'm using is um, a stride at the bottom end and uh, virtually any other game on the top end. So, Star Stable has, you know, it's kind of in the middle, uh, probably closer to the lower end versus, you know, a lot of other games, big games that are in development. Um, or doing live service development, okay? But SSO has done a lot for SSO, which honestly isn't saying a lot, but, you know, good, bad, they've done more this year. This has been controversial because people don't like change, okay? Change is hard. Change can make people angry, and especially if they don't like it, or they think that change has made things for the worst. I mean, sometimes change, aka new things, aren't always better, which is why for, you know, released software that's complete uh, with, you know, licenses and stuff, there was oldversion.com for a very long time, because sometimes you just wanted a, an iteration of the old version of the software and not the new software, okay? And so there's been lots of emotions this year, lots of ups and downs, some type of things. It's important to remember as we're looking back that people view things by how the beginning of the year went and how by the end of the year went. And they often forget kind of the soggy, wishy-washy middle. And so this year, Star Stable began with a server crash in January, and they also had a controversy where they removed their new snow shader, like right when Christmas ended, and people were like, why are you removing it? We've got like two more months of winter. <laughs> I liked the snow, and we turned it on and off, you <laughs> know, and they did bring it back, but it did cause some kind of negative PR for them that they had just summarily taken it out, you know. It's not spring yet. Grief. And then at the end of the year, we have had a event that is absolutely riddled with bugs and two um, new systems put into the game that are such a massive grind, players feel discouraged. which gives a negative perception of the company, okay? And then, of course, once again, hi, Jane. Jane, the executive producer for Star Stable, who is essentially number two, revealed in a Dennis video and talked to Dennis himself that she or people on her team are watching our videos, our Star Stable creator videos, and if they like our stuff, they'll watch other things from us. Uh, so 
Once again, if you're listening, I'll be addressing this in another video because this is very concerning and it's going to take a lot of time to go through 2023. So I want to address all that in another video. So we're going to go over the updates. I'm going to talk about the blog posts. We're going to talk about some news that has been announced, not so announced, um, you know, things like that. We're going to do an overview of this year's Glassdoor reviews. I'm, I'm not going to be like reading from them, but I'm going to give you kind of an overview of the tone. And we're going to talk about the PR team giving tours at headquarters. So in that will hopefully give us kind of a idea idea of how well Star Stable has done this year. On the update front, um, I'm going to try to give a list of things and as I'm going through this list, I'm going to say from my perception of what the community, where I've been hanging out in the community, different places, how people have received these updates. Okay. And they're not in chronological order. <laughs> I did go back through the news to make sure I got everything, you know, do some counting. But just going to go over um, things that are good. Were they positive? Were they negative? Was it mixed? The biggest update this year, and the one that everybody is going to notice when they first log into the game, is the new characters. Now, because this is such a big change, this of course was the most controversial. We had a preview of these new characters last year, and we had high hopes for, you know, the continued development of the characters between the alpha test that they labeled as a beta test and um, the actual release. Unfortunately, this actually didn't happen. You know, uh, work did not continue. Feedback was not taken into account. So when the new characters came out, the responses were wholeheartedly mixed, which were the exact same Kind of responses that were to the beta test. Um, so you had people coming out to defend the new characters to say that they're better than the old characters and you've had a lot of people come out to say they don't like the new characters and sometimes they used some really awful wording and other times if they had an artistic background they could give you some good, clear, um, constructive criticism or review from an artistic point of view on the product. Yes, the characters are a product. <laughs> so that was mixed. Uh, they also have started replacing the UI. Now it is my belief that the current UI is a placeholder. They can't really change the UI until they work on an inventory update, which was supposed to come this year and we've heard nothing about. So I am of the opinion that nothing has been done on it yet. So maybe next year. But the UI, I believe, is a placeholder. But the critiques I have been seeing about the UI overall have been pretty negative. You have a few people defending it, but mostly uh, it is considered negative both from an artistic standpoint and from an accessibility standpoint. Uh, a lot of people are having a hard time reading it because the contrast isn't sharp enough. You know, the, the white is not white enough and the dark blue is not dark blue enough. But the thing is, I believe just because it is so corporate, and so it looks like we bought this off of Unity Store. Um, I just believe it's a placeholder for now. 
until they have an inventory update or an in plan for the inventory. So then um, the person in charge of the UI, which I believe is B, who is also now a game level designer, which is a lot of responsibility for them. So uh, I'd be looking for some help, <laughs> I guess. Uh, I believe the, you know, that you know, this will, once they have a plan in place, a new UI will be created. But right now, this kind of mixed UI and with the old stuff that's like JPEGs that they can't change the sizing for without it, you know, blurring completely until in unreadability and this new this stuff that they're using that's vector graphics um i think most of it will probably be replaced like probably not like the you, the the xp bars and you know your little character window stuff but i'm hoping that most of it will be replaced with something that's a little more uh distinctive and feels more star -stick. The something you may or may not have noticed that they added was a new state machine. Now, a state machine is how the animations of both the character and the horse interact with each other and with the terrain. It's kind of like this big algorithm thing that, you know, is supposed to make things run smoother. And with a state machine, potentially they could do some different things with the way the horses are animated and make it more individual and stuff like that. The reviews I've seen for this from people who have noticed it are decidedly mixed because it has made the horse turning a little bit more like a bus. Some people don't like the fact that you can jump two times in a row from now from a trot. Uh, you know, you're, you've been hard stopping on things you shouldn't hard stop on, which means there's problems with the terrain layer, probably. And, you know, there's just been a whole bunch of bugs and, like, they're still working the kinks out of it. And they have not, I don't think, been able to implement it fully to the, to the degree that it probably could be done. Um, I'm not sure if this is an engine issue, a coding issue, a time issue. Uh, so... Mixed reviews on that. Um, I think the horses are turning a little too much like a bus and there's a little bit too much gap between when you hit the W key or the A key or the D key, whatever, to, between what the horse does. So, you know, it could be worked on, I guess. There are have been new championships. They replaced three of the championships in the area for the free players, basically. The Fort Pinta Championship, the Moreland Championship, and the Pony Championship. Now, most of the stuff I've seen has been actually been pretty positive. There's a few people who don't like like the boosts and stuff, in the, particularly in the Moreland Championship, because they feel like it's a little too fantasy, a little too early. Um, and I can understand that, I guess. I don't run the championships. The championships are not my thing. I. So I have no personal opinion about this, um, take that as you will. I think the racing mechanics need a complete overhaul, so, you know, that's just me. Uh, the added a new quote-unquote Western event after the rainbow event during the summer. So they took an event that was like a month and made it two months, which means it like dragged. And I do mean dragged. And most of the reviews, the response I saw to the Western event were negative. Now, I've done an entire video on this, so I don't really want to deep dive into it. But the event didn't really feel very eventy, I guess. Uh, Overhyped, underdelivered. And things that, you know, there was really some things that could have been thought through better, I guess. Players just, players logged in. Checked it out, logged out. Okay. They implemented a new horse bonding mechanic. So this is also something that you're going to see, you know, when you first get out. So there's a, you know, it's a product. And the reviews for this have been decidedly mixed. Okay. So when I say mixed, is that some people 
are very much in favor of, you know, the things I do with my horse and now giving me horse XP, like, like caring for my horse and stuff like that. And other, you know, people are very negative about it. A, the UI, totally understandable. B, they don't like having things locked that they've paid for. When you buy a horse and you've paid for a special movement or a special gate or whatever, they don't want it locked behind, you know, a level wall, which is totally understandable, especially, you know, since a lot of these special movement and gates are things that horses could automatically do. Um, my main issue with it is if you're going to have a level one horse that you can't do a fast gallop, that means every single race that a free player can access has to be reworked so that they can be completed with a horse that can't do a fast gallop and therefore can't jump as high or as far. That's my major event. I'm not personally fond of the little bubble pop-ups to tell you, you know, to talk about, you know, give you choices that, and they have absolutely nothing. They don't do anything. So that's why I'm not fond of it. And I like to bond with my horse by racing my horses. And this is like, it just, it's like too much type of thing. Like I, I plan, on, I want to like level up this horse over two or three weeks, but if you have this horse bonding stuff and I'm trying my level best to ignore it, and sometimes I just can't. It, it shortens the training time and it's I'm not fond of it type of thing like I get the whole brushing the horse that's great you do it once a once a day that's fine but like you're riding around and all of a sudden you've got this bubble coming up and it doesn't change anything it doesn't change your stats it doesn't actually change whether your horse likes you or not you like in the old autumn games if when you cared for your horse there was like a little heart and if your heart was full and red, the horse loved you and you would do what you wanted. And But if the, you weren't caring for your horse enough and you were running it into walls and stuff too much, the horse heart would go down and be black and the horse wouldn't obey you. Like, it, there, was, there was even a personality thing there kind of thing. So, like, mixed reviews because people also don't like the fact that there are levels. You don't earn anything. You know, there's no discernible stat increase. You're not earning a skill from your horse. You're not earning, um, you're not unlocking an animation or anything. And they don't like that it stops, the stats stop at level 13. So what's the point of going to level 15, especially when most of them don't care about a golden plaque in their stable. Okay. So very mixed. Uh, they redid the Hollow Woods this year, and actually the Hollow Woods has gotten a really positive review. I want to say Marley's was redone this year too, but I can't remember. And Marley's got a positive, if Marley's was redone this year, Marley's got a really positive review too. So the Hollow Woods looks really nice. Like the assets are really solid. There was a lot of care taken in, you know, making the places look good. You know, that there's Easter eggs for people to find and stuff like that. Um, it's, you know, sort of like... My main issue with it is it's not necessarily intuitive to run around in towards the mountains area. That's not really intuitive. And this was a remake, not a glow up. So, you know, it looks great. Um, the assets are really solid. Um, I'm going to talk about color in another video. But uh, overall, people liked it. Okay, people liked the remake. Okay. Yay, positive. Um, they added some horizontal progression stuff. Finally! So what is horizontal progression? Um, horizontal progression is when you're in a game and you can advance your skills or knowledge sets or whatever without advancing, increasing your overall level number. Okay? So... Horizontal progression usually involves some type of crafting system or a life skill system and things like that. Um, sometimes it might involve like a rating system, but like, it just involves 
a a mechanic that's not tied to your character's level, okay? So they've added some horizontal progression to the game, which was really, really needed because as they finally noticed, nobody was logging in. And the initial response to this horizontal progression was really positive. People really liked it. They were coming on, they were interacting with the system, you know, servers had lots of people there. And then came the infamous Friday nerf, update hotfix. Don't do this on a Friday. Just, just so you know, doing this on a Friday was probably the worst idea ever. <laughs> this should have been done on Monday or Wednesday. Like, don't do this on a Friday and leave the building. It's just entirely unprofessional. Um, so they took it and they gave it a 271.94% increase. Yes, I have done the math. So you went from needing 27,000 light to needing over 73,000 light. And that was responded to very, very negatively. People did not like it. People stopped interacting with the system. There was also the thing that they had also lowered the chances of finding what people considered the most challenging and interesting part of the entire system, which was the rune puzzles, and they haven't fixed that yet. I hear that they put it, upped it a little bit again, but they haven't fixed it. When people are interacting with your system and they really, really like like the little room puzzle things with the patterns, moving the patterns, don't don't change it. Just don't. <laughs> so 95, 90, 95% of that needed to be rolled back and it still hasn't been rolled back because um, they're going to double down as they always do. But it was very, very negative um, response to that nerf. They added some lunging and dressage trials during their events, okay? And the response to this was very positive. Complaints about the bugs, but very, very positive. People liked this. In fact, people liked it so much, they really wanted a team to work on, you know, right after the, after they got all the feedback and everything from the spring event and from the summer event, they wanted Star Stable to take a team and just start implementing this everywhere across the map. And I think that's what they really, the players really expected. And obviously this hasn't happened yet. We'll see if we get these things back in some sort of new beta iteration in the next events. Um, so but that was really, really positive. And I mean, I didn't have very many notes like about the lunging and I did have some notes about the dressage, but I didn't really have many notes on the lunging. Like it was something else to do and something that was horse related. So people were really like, yay, there's, I can do other things with my horse now. I can, you know, I can do um, but other videos and things like that. So it was very positive, but at the same time, especially the dressage was very, very buggy and that was very, very frustrating for people. So, you know, still leaning positive though. All right, they added a new version of what I call the Yule Goat mechanic for Christmas. This is again a horizontal progression and uh, I don't know how many of you were around but during one Christmas well when they were taking out all the um, Christmas crests where you were decorating the towns and getting Christmas trees and delivering wine and finding presents and delivering presents from Santa they took that out. And they, instead they put in this Yule Goat, and the big Yule Goat in Fort Pinta. And the Yule Goat would shoot out a ball of light, and you had to chase the ball of light to find the, the Yule Goats like we've got in the Aurora games right now. Like, the hide, and then you would play hide and seek with the babies, bring it back, be chased or whatever, um, or chase the goat, get your reward, and as you chased more and more, did more and more hide and seek with the goats, you got uh, rewards, which was a set of clothing and a pet. If you got everything, you had a pet. This took hours. This was massive grind. It was incredibly 
boring, even though the game was kind of fun, you know, but it was, it was grind. It was, it was awful. Um, and obviously they took it out and they used the, the game mechanic for something else. Like they first did the pumpkin hunt and then they put the, into the roars during Christmas. But this whole winter magic is just the entirely same mechanic with a new UI and some new labels on it. And the response has been just like with the Yule Goat shooting the freaking light across the map has been incredibly negative. And there's very good reason for that because the rewards are not very good. It takes a lot of time. The amount of magic needed is excessive. Uh, it doesn't feel like anybody did basic math. You know, you need 515 a day for 35 days. And they decided to drip feed the content over three or four weeks on how you can get the winter magic. So the first week, the only way to get the winter magic was running around like a chicken with your head cut off, going through these snow piles and getting 80 a day from Alex. And that's not enough. It really was not enough. And yes, you did have people grind this out because they just wanted to get it done. They had a lot of time off or whatever. But even those people who were grinding it out and spending hours in Star Stable said it is too much. You know, like, you know, they say they may have played other games where this type of grind is normal. And they're saying it's too much, you know, for this, it's the rewards aren't worth it. It is too much time. It is too much magic. Why aren't you putting these activities that would give us anywhere from 500 to 1,000 a day? And then we could chase the little snowflakes and snow piles if we want to. We don't, so we don't have to. If we want to get extras, why didn't you do it all at once? Again, this was overhyped and underdelivered. Um, you know, you have 18,000 magic points. There was 18 days until Christmas. There should have been 1,000 a day in activities for us to be able to complete it on or before Christmas. So everybody can enjoy the, the prettiness of the Christmas village, which needs some glow up still, but that's, you know, not my point here. They added five side quests and one main quest, plus the quest from the Hollow Woods. Last year, they added three main quests, five side quests, one new equestrian event, and I think the rainbow event stuff, some of the rainbow event stuff was new last year. Not a lot of it, I think just like a race or something. But like in this year, you know, we added the western event, which didn't have a, ra a race or anything, and um, you know, the, the new grind to the winter event. And the Halloween event had a race rework. You know. They also added the new tutorial onboarding section. I do not count story snacks. Um, story, story snacks are telling and I just don't count it. Sorry. I want to be shown my story. I don't want to be told my story. Okay. So overall though, things have been positive. Like the response to yay new story, you know, yay, you know, has been positive in that type of a sense. Um, so there wasn't as much as last year, but they've been working a lot on, you know, the state machine and the horizontal progression and the character and the horse bonding mechanics. So you you traded off some story for some basic building block mechanics of the game. And that's what happened. But everybody has been like, well, not everybody, but there has been a general overall positive, you know, view of, yay, more story. A lot of people have no idea what we're doing or why we're doing it because they can't remember and there's no replayability without buying another account. And a lot of the old G players are not precisely happy with the new tutorials. But until I see responses from brand new players who have never played the game before, haven't played Starshine Legacy, haven't read the books, I'm going to hold off my judgment on the um, tutorial stuff. Just so, you know. so, but overall, positive. So if we looked through this and I did a account, you know, you've got one, two, three, four, four positives, you know, one, two, three, 
for four negatives. I always have five positives. No. And like one, two, three, three mixed. So the positive and negative kind of um, equated to themselves, but the, with the side of mixed, you know, negative with the side of mixed means it's actually leaning heavily more towards negative than, you know, a negative public relations type of year, how the players are feeling, you know, than a positive re year for Star Stable. Like, and that's just on the updates. Okay, that's just the updates themselves. This is what we were given in the game over the year. Okay, this doesn't, you know, right there, mixed with the side of negative, you know, mixed in general means negative. Okay, it means it's not that people aren't like excessively happy with it. Um, so the positive and negatives are kind of equating each other and then the mixed but the mixed in negatives means it's gonna have like orange <laughs> it's orange <laughs> you know it's not like the blue or the red but it's the orange if we're going to use steam colors there so when people go to would go to look for it they just based on the updates and they're going it's mixed on the updates they might be more inclined to be like i'm not going to buy this without you know an excessive amount of time in the demo type of thing i need to try this for myself to see if it will run on my sheet my machine and see what i like if i like things but i'm not going to like be see the reviews and be like i'm gonna buy it right this instance okay so that's that's what that means but Star Stable has been doing these blog posts every month, and if you know where to find them, because uh, they don't always advertise them and they don't always leave links to them everywhere like they're supposed to. But they've been doing these blog posts trying to be a little bit more open and transparent about what's going on behind the scenes and what's coming up-ish, sort of. <laughs> a lot of the blog posts over the past year had been dedicated to you know the character updates and stuff like that now this is my personal thing um because there's no comment section because a lot of uh, as far as i'm aware content creators don't really um respond to the blogs they don't do videos about them um there's not a lot of places for me to go and look for responses to you know see how people react to the blogs um Sometimes you see it on Reddit, but a lot of times it's kind of crickets. So, in my opinion, <laughs> my feelings about this having, you know, gone to art school, studied some game dev on my own, uh, you know, I went to art school for fashion, studied game dev on my own, you know, a while back, and uh, traditional game dev stuff, and uh, then worked for a manufacturing company in the office and out on the floor, which you would not believe if you worked in any sort of manufacturing, how much crossover there is and how much you can learn. That was a very learning experience. Um, reading these blog posts have been like, wow, I cannot believe you're actually confirming this. Like sitting here on the outside, I really don't know what's going on inside Star Stable HQ. I really don't. Okay, I can have some speculation, I can have some good guesses, but I don't know what's going on. But um, this year's blog posts have been very revealing in some ways. And I do not like having my speculations confirmed because, you know, I want to be like, oh my god, Star Stable is a great place to work, it's a functional company, they're doing a lot of stuff. <laughs> I would love to be there, but I can't do that. I can't. Um, just everything that I see when the way things come out, you know, the weekly updates, the bugs, the, you know, the server crashes, the way people talk, you know, when they don't think we're paying attention. Uh, it doesn't paint a pretty picture of the company. So uh, this year we had Stacy's continued 
Stacy Place, the game director, con her continued bewilderment over the anger from the community over a lack of a story quest team. When her game is essentially, when you come down to it, the content is a visual novel and a um, horse buying simulator. She pushes the horse buying simulator. The rest of us are like, visual novel soon, please? Come on. It's been almost 11 years now. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> and that she really still does not understand the anger from that November when she did that interview with the main place that, you know, there was no story quest team. And as far as I can tell, there still is no story quest team. And uh, because in another blog post, they explained how the teams are organized. And as far as I can tell, despite um, a an, an insistence that they were restructuring and that um, the there's a review that says the restructuring has left some people fragile. As far as I can tell, the basic structure of what is going on before the restructuring and after the restructuring is virtually almost identical. They just changed some names. And there's like five or six people on a team and they're working on this, you know, they five or six people working on the characters or five or six people working on an event and you know this. And it's just like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, no, this is not how things should be going. But, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, so there's like this anger because there's no five or six, ten people dedicated to sitting there and going, this is the story and this is where we want to go. You know, you have one job to spend hundreds of hours coming up with an intriguing, interesting story for an event or you an intriguing, interesting story for the overall game and it's just not showing up. It, yes, it is much easier to program in grind. Your job is to create a game, a game product people want to interact with. So seeing that is like, you, you, you have got to be kidding me. Like, you're still doing this. You know that people are watching, that people are going with the industry experience who play your game are going, something's not right here. Um, they showed off their horse and human rigging things, and they're not adequate. And in the horse's case, it's not correct, uh, especially in the back end. And it does explain a lot about their animations and how their animations work. Um, in one blog post, when they were talking about the new horizontal progression system, they confirmed that players were only logging into events. No, really? <laughs> and, you know, and they've also given me personally enough information to figure out how the retrofitting in Magic Horses are being done and why things are breaking when they do it. It's very, very concerning. Now, I can't, I can't um, get any idea of how the community feels about this. Anytime I do see posts about these things that come from people who have game dev experience, they are in my ship going, what in the world is going on? Why in the world are you confirming this? There are some things you should be keeping behind your teeth, especially if you do not want um, <sighs> negative game reviews, <laughs> basically. Con just constructive critique. If you are looking for positivity, you should not be telling us these things. Um, just so you know, just so you know. All right. Now, there, there has been news, and there has been no news, and <laughs> there, there has been things that, you know, should have been news. <laughs> like, okay. So, um, in news that everybody knew, knew and could see was the servers crashed in January. Now I have said that. And the bugs ha are multiplying. You can all see that. And some of them are more important to st Star Stable to fix than others. Usually anything that helps the player is fixed really fast and things like um, bugs that are stuck in main story quests that the players have paid for sometimes take weeks to months to fix. Uh, Star Stable HQ has moved. That is 
news that they've told us. Uh, I've been told they've moved to a better area where the rent is higher. I've been told they've moved to a worse area where the rent is lower. I'm really not sure where they've moved. I don't live there in Stockholm. I'm not in Sweden. So the main thing is they've moved. Uh, but also at the same time, news is that they have laid off 15% of the company. Now this was before we heard about other layoffs. We heard about other layoffs very early on in the first quarter of the year. The 15% layoffs were in the second or third quarter of the year. So we already had people being laid off and let go in the first quarter. And then in the second and third quarter, they laid off 15% of the company. So that was about 300 employees total. So around 45 employees were let go. And this is on top of the idea of it's kind of a revolving door there of people coming and going, whether or not they're on, you know, two to six months contracts, I don't know, or if they're just up and quitting voluntarily. But this is something that we have seen a lot consistently over time with Star Stable, usually between the third or fourth quarter, they will do some sort of layoffs. Uh, this happened at the end of 2021. We didn't have any news about it. Like we just heard like, oh my God, 16 to 20 people left. And whether it was layoffs or they quit, we weren't really told. Um, so there have been layoffs. Now in the beginning of the year, in the, around the first quarter, around April Fools, as uh, when we heard about Helena and Ellie and the artist who does the splash screens and the book covers. I don't have her name to hand right now, but they were let go. They they were they were said we don't need your help anymore. So if you're noticing that the splash screens that you're seeing as the game logs on are now in-game character models and in, in, with in-game backgrounds and stuff like that that have been painted on or whatever, that's why that artist is gone. If you're noticing there aren't any more comics on the Instagram, Ellie is gone. If you've noticed that there are no new book announcements from Helena and that the books are not being translated into English that have been put out, like the last three books that she wrote, that's because Helena has been, her contract has been severed. She's no longer, and she doesn't have any control over the translation issue. That would be Star Stable authorizing Simon and Shuster to do it, which apparently they haven't. Um, so we have no, you know, she is also gone and she's very, you know, upset because she had plans, she had ideas. Uh, we also know, though it has not been announced, that Victor, the concept, world concept artist for Star Stable, the one who has done everything since Doyle's Abbey, so Doyle's Abbey, Steve's Farm, Silver Glade, uh, Marley's, the racetrack, uh, the, the Hollow Woods, uh, Mistfall, the Redwoods area and the uh, Wild Woods area, he's gone. He's he's left for another company, which is understandable. He's been there since 2017 and they've only updated eight very small areas. So he's probably gone to another place where he can do more work and have more to show for it. Um, so what else has not been announced, but you can see when you look at it. The, the new Dutch Warmbloods have introduced yet another new art style into the game. And you're going, well, I don't see a difference in the horse textures. No, the horse textures are about the same, but take a look at the eyeballs. The eyeballs are different. The eyeballs are a lot more realistic. And it can be just those little things like that that change the art style of the game. And this is not actually good because at least the art styles around the eyeballs had been consistent. We'd had this kind of anime eyeball for a while. Now we don't know what horse is going to be more realistic and what horse is going to be a little more anime. And that's not good. Okay. This game already has too many art styles. It's very confusing visually. They need to find one and stick it to it, please. Um, things that we have absolutely had radio silence on. And that is... Once again, the book translates into English. We have heard nothing. We don't know if there's going to be any more of those. We don't know if there's going to be any more galaxy books. So they had that middle grade book they had written um, and promoted the horse and game. And there's been no news about if there's going to be a second book or a third book. We don't know how the sales went. So, you know, 
We've had no news about what happened to the Missed Ball cartoon, so I'm assuming it's been canceled. Um, we've had no news about the toy line, so I'm also assuming that's been canceled. We've had no news about the music for quite a while, like the, the Miscreants music and Nomi's music, so I'm assuming that they're no longer doing that. There has not been a really announced announced. Um, you kind of learned by osmosis, I guess, or if you were in the embassy, but the ambassador program has been quote unquote suspended. This is the second time they've suspended it, but this time it feels more like they're ending it because uh, the embassy discord is doing a complete, a completely new um, branding. So like, so the ambassador program has been suspended and uh, Something that has not been announced, but is news, and that Star Stable will never announce, but if you are in certain circles, you know this, is that hacking is currently quite rampant in Star Stable because people are bored. Um, new horses do not equal new content. Who knows the consequences of our actions? So when you put in like these new horizontal systems with the light and with the winter magic and stuff like that, if your people aren't just grinding them out, they're probably going to figure out uh, with this hacking program some way to duplicate it. But you know, people are getting tired of having nothing to do. So they make their own fun and it is a lot easier for them to make their own fun if they can get into the program files by paying for a cheat program and you know, buying the horses that have quote unquote been taken out of the game or you know buying clothes that you can't get because it's in the files but it's never been released in the game and you know there's full sets and stuff in there i don't hack the game okay just a news flash i am not a hacker i just people are coming to me and say Ginny, did you know x y and z and I'm like no i didn't know x y and z thank you uh, that's interesting but like you have you have these people who are literally allowing creators to access these accounts that they have that they've used this cheat program on so that these creators can do like spoiler videos or show off things, you know, before Star Stable releases them. So this is not good. This is going, this eats into Star Stable's profits. So, you know, that's why I'm quite sure the tech team is working on trying to close off the loopholes in the code so people can't do this anymore. Profit is everything. The Glassdoor reviews have remained much the same. And I have two of them. One is from a current employee of three years and the other one is a former employee of more than one year, and they're both anonymous. Now, in both of them agree that the people that work at Star Stable are nice, and the community is engaged, and it's, you know, flexible work authors, and has a nice office. We're gonna cover that under the tour in just a minute. But both of them are pretty clear that management doesn't know what they're doing. Now, this has been a common theme for two or three years since, since I think 2020, when people first realized Star Stable employees are leaving reviews on Glassdoor. <laughs> ah, drama! And the, the, what they're saying is that the, they're, making a series of bad decisions, employees are suffering because of these bad decisions, um, they don't know, the, the management doesn't have a vision. They don't have a strategy. There's essentially no five-year plan. They don't, they've had, you know, they just implemented a one-year plan this year, supposedly, but they don't have a five-year plan. There's no, like, way to know where this game is going to be in five years. So 
you you go to a meeting, you have what they say is expect a lot of buzzwords, useless meetings, workshops that lead to no real change, no transparency on decisions and business performance. Uh, HR still doesn't care about the employees unless you're, you know, one of the nice employees, I guess. And, you know, they have great people there, but they don't have, um, they just, they don't have a vision. They don't have a plan. And they don't want to take on the hard questions And, you know, this person says be brave. They don't want to take on the hard questions and be brave to admit they need help. Um, it's been, it's been pointed out to me multiple times now by my own people, you know, people who talk to me a lot and by people just general, I'm in out there in the community watching, lurking. I don't often come out of lurking. When I do come out of lurking, it's because I know what I'm talking about. As I've always been out there. And it has come out to me, and several people have said this, that SSO's vision seems to be TikTok trends. Or things they are getting from their own content creators. Which is why having Jane and her team watching content creative videos is very worrisome to me. But we're going to, again, do that in another video. But this explains a lot. It explains a lot to me on why, you know, the mechanics aren't tied to each other. That I can find things on the first page of Google Image Search if I entered the right Google thing. Um, There is a lot of things to me that if they are literally using social media trends to direct the vision of their game from the magical horses that they're selling to the, the tack and the clothes to how things are being presented in the game and the reviews are going, there's no product strategy. It's, the proof is there in the game itself, in the product. The proof is in the product, okay? How do players engage with the product? Do they stick around? You know, do they even start to engage with the product? Once they're finished with aspects, mechanical systems of the product, do they continue to use them? For instance, Pharaoh's Crafting, how many players are continuing to use that? How many players are continuing to do fishing after the fishing is done? How many players interact with archaeology? And yes, they will know this. They're, they can get that data. So how many players are here for the visual novel story? And where, you know, do you have a vision for where you're taking that story? And when the class door people say they just want to pump out horses and, you know, make it a horse buying, pretty horse buying simulator, and they don't have a vision for their product, I can look at the product and go, yeah, that tracks. Um, and you, they are asking us to pay triple A prices for a product that is full of bugs that you can't play as a regular player, a paying player through the entire story that takes less than three months and not run into a place where you just get stuck because there's there's a technical glitch in the system and you, then you have to report it and you have to make a video and you have to fight with the, with the PR team to see, make sure that your report is sent to the technical people who, you know, are tearing their hair out because, you know, there are so many players that are so bored that they are finding every single way that they can exploit the game and they're buying programs to hack the code of the game. And, you know, 
yes, it, they are overworked. The devs are overwhelmed. The C, if the CEOs are taking on too much or whatever and are overworked and overwhelmed or they don't know, you know, despite supposedly some of them having degrees in this or having worked in the industry a long time, they don't know the product, you know, they don't know what they want their product to be and they need help. Um, and so they're trying to get that help by going out into the community where the community is, okay, we're engaged, but we're very, very toxic and we're very, very, um, there's, we're all over the map, believe me. You're not going to get consensus out of the community. I did a survey in hopes it would help. And like people on, were going, oh, the survey is biased or I don't like the survey. Well, then make your own survey. And the more information that, you know, you're willing, if you're willing to put together this inf type of marketing information, this product marketing information for SSO, that's fine. Like, I get it. But at the same time, SSO shouldn't need that type of help. They shouldn't because they are a company. They should have access to the resources, even in their own game dev team, to to be able to address these problems, okay? They need to know what type of game they are. Are they an MMO game, like Johan seems to want to call them, Johan being the CEO, or are they going to shoot for being an RPG in any way, shape, or form? Um, is that what they want? What do they want? Um, so, and then they gave us tour. They gave us a tour on, I believe it was on TikTok and on Instagram, of both the old HQ and the new HQ. And the tour was... The tour made this place out to look like a great place to work. And people are saying that on the glass door that it is a great place to work. The people are friendly. It's in a good area of town, whatever. Very easy to get to. But when, you know, you're going through this and you've got you know, custom furniture and flashy colors and people are trying to, you know, it's it's great for creativity and stuff like that. But then you still got to look at the actual dev process and how the devs are feeling. And the devs are great. <laughs> and the reviewers are great. <laughs> you don't, every time we try to put forth something that would help the game, we get shot down <laughs> type of thing. And the really telling thing to me was they weren't willing to show where the game was made. They were like, oh, it's all top secret. And I'm like, no, you can get little screens to put over your 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 computer screen so people can't see it. My chiropractor office has one of those, for God's sake. I can stand there and I can't see what's going on, you know, on a side view. And I can't see what's going on on the screen. You know, only she can see it. So I can't see people, patients' information and everything. Um, you know... That's the important part. If it is so tough, if I can't even sit there and count desks, that is a problem. Like, if you're saying we want to be more transparent and we want to be more open, then dear God, give us a tour of your dead area. I don't care about your statue of Star Starshine. I don't care about your statue of Fripp. Um, I am very concerned that you have three places to play video games in your company. I'm concerned about your crafting corner. And I'm concerned about this because, you know, I'm an American <laughs> and our work culture is a little different. But as a customer, I'm concerned because I don't want my money that I'm putting into your game to be go towards employees that are playing games. When are they doing work? When, you know, it's great that you're carving pumpkins and making origami, but not on company time. That looks so unprofessional. Like, yes, you do need to play some games for, like, market research, since you seem to need your market research, you know, on, you know, game research. But at the same time, three or four places with multiple controllers, that makes me feel like you're playing, you're not, you, maybe you're playing Red Dead Redemption 2, but maybe you're also playing Overwatch, and I'm just a little concerned that you're doing this on company time, you know? I also feel that your TikTok team is very passive aggressive. You know, they're trying to be cool, but it comes off very passive aggressive and very condescending towards your community. You might want to look into that <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> so, overall, this 
year has been pretty mixed on the updates with a side of negative on the blog posts and your Glassdoor reviews going, this is what's being said on your Glassdoor reviews in public and this is what I can figure out just by watching you and now your blog posts are telling me exactly what I was afraid of, like, you know, you that your management needs help, you know, <laughs> that you don't have a vision for your product and you're at 10, 11 years in and if you don't have a vision for your product, sure, you're still making money, but that's going to have a distinct expiration date, especially if the hacking program gets more popular. No, I'm not going to tell you who has the hacking program, where to get it, how to use it. No, I'm, I'm not that type of person. I just know it's out there. I know there's, you know, and I know there's fake hacking programs out there too. So beware. So they've made a lot of changes. And some of these changes are foundational and are absolutely necessary. And there are going to be changes of, you know, trying to implement, anti, you know, the anti-cheat and hopefully a new inventory system and doing to the OpenGL 4.3 so that they can work on their lighting system and work on their weather system. There's a lot of, you know, foundational engine technical things that need to be done behind the scenes that aren't really going to, um, do show up in the actual product other than hopefully better load times and less lag. I'm very doubtful on that one right now. Um, and they have started on those things. I'm just concerned that there might not be enough people with enough time to focus on those things, you know, type of thing. Uh, so they have done, you know, some good stuff this year and they have really kind of you know made a little chip in what needs to be done but um it's been a very bad public relations year for them because of those same type of decision making things you know oh doing the candle candle was I have no idea where that came from um firing the three very creative people that the that the community was very attached to without actually doing a company announcement we had to learn from them themselves you know Victor leaving is not a good sign uh the so you know your glass door reviews are not getting any better I mean even the one where it's saying five stars and uh, most people haven't had, this is all reads like people who had, this is their first job. And it's just like, you know, people who, even if it is your first job, if you walk into a place and it feels chaotic and unorganized, you're going to know it's going to feel chaotic and unorganized, even if it's your first job. Okay. So even like the people who are trying to defend Star Stable are coming off a little tone deaf, I guess. So next year we really do need to see that inventory system update. Um, we'll see how, how Path of Terror goes and see how that ties into anything else. I hear that it might tie into the race system, that it might tie into the crafting system. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but this year has been pretty skeevy, I guess. It's not skeevy, but kind of like, you know, they're, they're, they took a step forward. There is a step forward here, but there's also been a couple steps back. Right. So, thank you for listening. Take care of yourselves. Bless. Stay safe. And uh, I have two more Star Staple videos planned. I want to talk about the James Skullman situation. And I want to talk about Old SOSO was better. with arguments, <laughs> with supporting evidence. So that should probably take us into mid-January for Thursday SSO videos and completely ruin my algorithm again. But if you enjoy my SSO content, I will see you in the next video. <laughs>